This is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. If you've been listening to my podcast, one of the things that you know that I often talk about is how technical it is to be in the global supply chain. And when I say technical, I don't mean like computer savvy or being able to know, you know, computer programs where yes, that helps and is extremely helpful. But actually, when I say technical, it means that you need to basically understand what you are selling and the quality of what you are selling. Whether it is you are deciding to sell pillowcases or lamps or computers or computer parts or chips or a plug or whatever it is that you've decided that you're going to sell into whatever your market is, you need to have some technical expertise and understand that. And that is not really anything that's easy to be able to be gained. That is something which takes time and effort and it takes it actually takes a lot of time because anything you are looking to produce has a technical aspect to it. One of the examples is, for example, if you're looking to produce a lamp, let's say you want to produce a lamp for the U.S. market, you need to understand all the technical requirements for that lamp. You need to understand exactly what type of socket you need or even what a socket is, what a lamp holder is, what a switch is. You need to understand all the different and various parts of that lamp. Because, for example, even the socket itself, there can be different types of sizes for that socket. For example, in the United States, the standard socket is an E26. You know, in Europe, it could be called something different, but this basically is what we call as the Edison light or the light bulb that Thomas Edison invented so many years ago. But even among the socket itself, you know, there could be a, what we call a heavy duty socket, which would be a socket which is made of a more solid material, a lot of times like a solid brass or a solid metal. You could have a regular socket, which would then be a thinner socket. A heavy-duty socket would be basically, usually a lot of times, is screwed in. It's manufactured a little bit differently where a regular socket could be clipped in. You know, you have to know your off-and-on switch. Are you going to have one that's going to be made on metal or the standard black plastic that you see so much around? All of these can make such a difference in the socket itself. You need to understand you can have a key or keyless socket. Key means you have the switch. Keyless means you don't have. You know, you're going to have a two-way, a three-way, or a dimmer. Um, you know, for the switch, is is the socket going to be metal or is it going to be metal, ceramic, or plastic? Is it going to be polished brass or polished nickel? Or is it going to be a different color? You want antique brass, polished copper, satin nickel, satin black? Is your lamp holder, is it going to screw together or is it going to clip in? Are you going to have a turn knob? You know, is it going to be a black turn knob or is it going to be a black, which is plastic, which you see on many types of standard lamps, or is it going to be a metal? Are you going to use it for a table lamp, a floor lamp, or a pendant? All of that can make a difference too, of course, for the ultimate cost of the end product. It doesn't even end there because you have to really understand which type of socket you want. Do you want an E12, E19, you know, E39? All of these are different types of sockets, which would have different uses too. You need to understand again, which type of socket that you need. You know, so like an E12, a lot of times can be used for candelabra, it can be used for something like a chandelier. Um, you know, an E19, you might use for sconce. It just depends on what type of sconce it is. An E26 is usually considered a standard one. Or an E39 is a Mongol, what they call a Mongol socket. You have to understand what the use is going to be for the very end product. And you might ask yourself, well, why does this matter? Why should this make a difference? Why do we care about this? Well, first of all, number one, if you go into a factory and you are going to buy lamps from them, and then you say to them, like, and the factory asks you, well, what kind of socket do you want? You might say, um, I, I don't know. What's a socket? They're going to say, oh, this person doesn't know what they're talking about. And they'll probably be very patient and very good with you. And they'll show you the different types. But at the end of the day, you will you will tell them something about yourself. You will tell them that you don't really understand what you're doing. You're not someone who's in the industry itself. And that can become a problem because then they'll also know that you probably won't know the pricing. You may not know other things which could be important for you to be able to be competitive within the global supply chain. The other thing, too, is that you need to understand this yourself because you need to understand what you are selling to the to the customer and why. And also, this will matter, too, for the type of 
you know, whatever type of packaging and other things you put onto your packaging itself. You know, most factories will ask you to give the packaging to them. You need to understand what you're giving to them and why. What type of hang tags, what type of other things you might need to have on the product itself. That is why, because of the fact that the global supply chain is such a technical supply chain, that there's so much many technical aspects within the supply chain itself. That is why you won't find a factory that's producing computers suddenly going to say like, hey, I want to produce beds. That's why the supply chain itself is extremely technical, that they would not switch over in such a way. It's also something which I found very interesting because in a place like the United States, there's been a lot of talk lately about things like oh, we're going to bring back all the manufacturing jobs to America. And I've often thought, yeah, that's great. That sounds really, really good. That sounds like something great. It's something which sounds good when politicians talk. But the reality of it all is very different. Because if the technical expertise is gone, or it's no longer there, or you don't have the people who understand how to make or manufacture something, it will be very difficult to bring it back. We'll say, well, you know, you can train someone, you can teach them. Yes, you can, but then you still have that learning curve. That is why a lot of times when you go to a place like China or in Asia, that's why you'll find like a lot of the furniture factories are in the same location. A lot of the lighting factories might be in similar locations. A lot of the ceramic factories, a lot of the technical factories are in similar locations. Why? because they can be able to find the workers that they need to be able to find. I was just recently out in Utah, and Utah is becoming a new technical center. And one of the places that's becoming a new technical center is a small town called Lehigh, which is basically between Salt Lake City and Provo, Utah, which has UVU um, University and also Brigham Young University. You know, if you go there, someone was saying to me that, oh, there used to be only, you know, six buildings here now. There's something like 30. And a lot of them are all tech companies. And they're building what's kind of like a tech center. Same thing with Silicon Valley in the United States. You know, they built their industry upon being like a lot of the same type of workers in the same area. That's why you find that also in places like China or Vietnam or other places with manufacturing, is you will find that all of these suppliers will be generally a lot in the same areas. Why do they do that? Well, number one, they can find the workers, they can find the technical expertise, they can find the parts, they can find the hardware, and it, it, be, it helps them to be able to become more competitive over the long run. It is also why it can be difficult many times for people to come to the United States and just say out in the middle of nowhere, I'm going to open up this type of factory and there's no workers there or there's no technical expertise there to help them to be able to manufacture their goods. This is why it goes back to what I've said here at the very beginning, that the global supply chain or any type of the supply chain is very technical. So if you're looking to get into the global supply chain or you're thinking about it, or you're thinking about importing a product, or maybe you're, you're importing a product now, that is why you need to understand the product you are importing. You need to understand all the technical expertise. And the deeper you get into those products, the more you understand is how almost every single product you're going to produce has a technical aspect to it that you need to understand. And that is the key and what is extremely important in all of this. That is what makes the global supply chain extremely difficult if you don't understand exactly what you are doing. That is why it is a very technical type of industry. If you're interested to find out more about the light bulbs or you're you know, interested in learning more about this, if that happens to be something that you are going to be looking to supply, I will put a link to a blog post called What is the Standard Light Bulb Base that you can check out some more information and may give you some ideas extremely how technical it can be for any type of product you're looking to produce. This is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. Thank you so much for listening. We, I really do appreciate you, our listeners, for listening to us. I'd like to thank our technical team, specifically Rico, for helping make this possible. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.